Hello, my name is Gennady Scriptum TV from Moscow, Russia. It's the first Russian cryptocurrency and blockchain channel. And now we shall talk to Robert Villion. It's a co-founder and president of Zencash cryptocurrency. Okay, hello Robert, one more time. Uh, my name is Gennady. Uh, I'm speaking from Moscow. And where are you right now? Gennady, uh, nice to meet you. I'm speaking from South Carolina, United States. Ah, okay. So you are in the Silicon Valley, some, some, somewhere, yeah? <laughs> yeah, some, some, somewhere like that, yeah. Somewhere. <laughs> I'm actually, yeah, I, I'm in South Carolina, which is more, um, it's more, it's smaller, actually, a lot smaller than Silicon Valley. Yeah. But it's some kind of valley, so it's a technolo technological place, or, you know. And uh, this yeah, is your yeah. uh, uh, headquarter of Zencash project, yes? Mm, correct, yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, so the first thing I would like to ask you, what is your general uh, roadmap of your project uh, for this year and for the next year? So our roadmap combines um, some engine, very cool engineering stuff uh, with some research and development. So we're combining uh, product development on the engineering side to make our, all of our products more useful, usable. And we have some really big research and development projects with some, uh, some uh, big industry partners like IOHK to do things like um, build into our protocol a voting system so that the users can directly determine how resources are used. Uh, and we're also upgrading significantly the, um, the blockchain protocol itself. So we're looking at a directed acyclic graph architecture, a DAG, um, to have massive throughput increase to our system where we can do potentially thousands of transactions per second. Mm -hmm. OK, and it's, it's too fast. It's too fast for. Uh, and uh, is the difference between the shielded or unshielded transaction generally in timing? Uh, there is. There's, there's a big difference, actually. So for a wallet to generate a shielded transaction requires about 30 seconds of computational oh, power right oh, now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. whereas an, it, um, a transparent transaction is near instantaneous. So yeah, there, there's just so much more computation that goes into verifying the zero-knowledge proofs. Mm. Okay, and uh, uh, you know, the problem of generally, the problem of uh, uh, privacy is uh, is very important, I think, and uh, you know that uh, some uh, three um, th some uh, government agencies could uh, look through the blockchain, yes, and if the uh, customer make a private transaction in shielded private transaction to the customer which does not have shield uh, this shielded wallet, this uh, transaction will be <laughs> you know not so secure, yes, and. Uh, 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 and what part of uh, transaction in this uh, in your network right for right now is uh, shielded? In what, f how many percent of transaction? So uh, I, I don't know, but I can tell you we have probably the the most uh, the highest quantity of shielded transactions, uh, and the reason for that is we have the secure node network um, where we have about ten thousand nodes on the network that register to be what we call a secure node, which means they have um, you know, more encryption on them, they have some uptime requirements, some technical requirements. And what we do is every day we challenge, we send a challenge transaction to each of these nodes that's shielded. So yeah. we have about 10,000 transactions per day just to respond to this particular system mm -hmm. that are shielded. And what this does, it increases the privacy of our network significantly because now we have at a minimum, about 10,000 transactions per day in shielded addresses that are just part of this one challenge and response system. So that adds a whole different uh, privacy layer into the, the network that other systems don't have. Okay, you, you told that you have uh, 10,000 shielded transactions uh, per day, and how many unshielded? Oh, uh, yeah, so that's, 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 a, that's a minimum of 10,000 per day just because okay. of the system. Um, so, yeah, I would say uh, still the majority of transactions are transparent. So anything that people do on exchanges, for instance, and putting money into and out of exchange, these are all transparent. 
uh, business transactions. So, for instance, our our treasury, like our our nonprofit organization, when we pay people, we use transparent transactions because we want there to be audit ability. We want there to be um, tr full transparency. So, actually, when businesses use our system, they use transparent transactions. And this is why um, you know it, it, the private transactions are for individuals to protect individual businesses typically use transparent. So there's a good mix of the two, um, but I would say the majority are transparent. Uh, okay. And uh, what about government regulation? So do you think that is po it is possible for this year and for the next that uh, some, uh, I don't know who's uh, three, uh, three letters agency be become and tell me, Rob, uh, okay, that's nice, but you, you can do KYC for every customer. So what, what do you suggest for this? Yeah, <laughs> but what I suggest, what I suggest to regulators, and, and I do speak with them as well, we, we have um, a regulatory um, lobbying group that we participate in, and we try to inform the regulators and let them know we're not criminals, we're not doing anything bad, right? We don't want to sponsor anything bad, um, but we do believe that individuals need additional security so their money doesn't get stolen, right? There's so many hackers out there. Um, so the biggest motivation for the, the shielded addresses, for instance, is to protect individuals, to, to protect their money, right? Because mm -hmm. you don't want the world to see your bank account and how much yeah. money you have and exactly where they need to go to steal it, right? So you want this stuff to be private. What I tell regulators is focus on the points of exchange, focus on the on and off ramps into the, the ecosystem. So look at the exchanges in the world and do the KYC, AML uh, regulations where people are going from you know, ruble or dollar into yeah. Bitcoin. And that's where you need to regulate, yeah. right? Yeah, and uh, I know that you ecosystem of your project, you are developing a, a secure messenger. Yes, and this is very yes. important. Yeah, and uh, uh, have you heard something that Russian government are going to block Telegram in Russia? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, <because laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> yes, yeah. because Telegram do does not want to to give the keys to Russian government. Yeah, to check some criminals, but I, I don't know why. Uh, what and what about this? Uh, and what about this? Your secure messenger is it possible to use by uh, iPhone just? Android uh, smartphone? No. Not yet. Not no. yet. No, because we use the shielded address um, type uh. of, of data structure to do the messaging, which is why it's so much more secure than even Telegram, because we use zero knowledge cryptography. Yeah. So you can't see any details about the transaction. You can't tell who's talking to who or what they're saying. Um, so there's no way to compromise it. Cryptographically, there's no way that we could give a government a key. Right? It, it's all peer to peer. So it's the individuals who decide who gets to read their message. Uh, and we, we have no choice. Like we have no, if a government said, hey, Rob, give me the keys, there, there are no keys that I could give. Uh, so they, they will block you. Yeah. Then they will block you. <laughs> no? Yeah. That's hard to do, though. And I don't know how they would do it, honestly, because uh, our system runs on a peer to peer network topology on the internet. Yeah. So even if, even if they were to, I mean, they could try to block the entire internet, I guess. But but <laughs> if they allow any kind any kind of networking across individuals, then it's really difficult to block. So I don't know what they would do. Uh, so do you, have you heard that uh, some uh, British uh, government representative tell that uh, it is now uh, this uh, security of private currencies like Zencash, Dash, or Monero? Uh, they criminals using <laughs> using uh, mostly used oh, by yeah. criminals. <laughs> have you yeah, heard? yeah. Well, so you know, I, I've heard people say exactly that. And I think that they're wrong. I, I don't think that they know what they're talking about. Um, there, there are so many real use cases in the world that have nothing to do with criminals. So, for instance, um, we have, say, one of our competitors, uh, Monero, is, uh, and I love this project, but at the same time, they actively try to push their, their technology to the dark markets, uh, which I think is a big mistake, right? Why would that be your market? Uh, that you, you advertise to, right? Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, what, what we tried to do is we tried to do the opposite and we tried to do things like 
help charities. Mm -hmm. You know, when there was a hurricane going through Mexico, we helped rebuild houses in Mexico. Like we, we're trying to help out people in Africa who don't have banking services, right? So we, we're trying to do the, the social good and focus on that. Now, of course, criminals could use our technology, and that's unfortunate. But, you know, criminals also use cell phones, right? Yeah. So yeah. cell phones have so much social good and economic good, but criminals still use it. Uh, yes. And what uh, could you explain about your cooperation with uh, Zida? Uh, with, uh, this uh, uh, very interesting fingerprint scanner device. Uh, <laughs> I, I, have, I have seen on presentation. Uh, how does it work? And is it available right now for purchasing? So it's not. Actually, they're, they're going through the final, uh, final phases of their production. And it's scheduled to be available in the, the fall. So September or October time frame. Uh, yeah, so we, we just uh, we have an amazing business development team that finds these really unique opportunities. And they, they do an amazing job building these partnerships. So we have a partnership with Zeta where we're going to be one of their first few coins that they add to the, their system which I think is really nice because, number one, they're innovative. They, they, they're kind of thinking outside of the box where they're not doing the, the, the traditional hardware wallet concept. They're kind of expanding that. But then they're also doing the pragmatic business stuff. Like they have um, you know, some marketing relationships with, say, Best Buy, this huge corporation where the device will be in this huge corporation for sale and now people will be able to buy Zen in Best Buy once this thing goes live, which is tremendous. So this is where I think the industry needs to go, where we kind of, we've been building for the last 10 years for like engineers designing things for engineers. But now I think we need to start transitioning where engineers are designing things for real people. <laughs> you know, not that engineers aren't real people, but you know, the, the mass market has different requirements for technology and products. So that's where this, this goes towards our goal for 2018 is to transition into the mass market where we're designing products that are very easy for people to use. Right? Uh, and uh, have you heard that uh, Apple generally refused to uh, bring uh, some uh, cryptocurrency wallet into the system? Uh, yes. And, uh, and what about Zencash <laughs> and Apple? You know, I. I, uh, we have an Apple developer account they granted us, so <laughs> we, they, we, we, we have tentative approval for our products, but we'll see. We're pushing uh, some new uh, mobile wallets in about a month, so we'll see how those go. Um, so we'll have a, a new iOS wallet um, next month. It will be very nice, oh, okay. probably towards the end of uh, May. Uh, it will be yeah. available at Apple's App Store? Yeah. Well, that's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> that's the plan? <laughs> yeah, that's the plan. Yeah, so they, they gave us a developer account, so why not, right? We're going to publish it, and hopefully they uh, accept it. We, we also have Coinomi. It's another mobile, like, uh, mobile wallet with multi-asset mm -hmm. multi mobile wallet. Um, so Zen is on there. We're on the iOS store. So iOS, um, you know, they have, they have high standards for what gets published. Um, and sometimes they reject projects, but they also accept uh, crypto projects. Like our other partner, Coinomi, uh, where you can you can yeah, store yeah. your Zen now on an iOS device. You know, so they're they're available on Apple. Yeah, yeah, I know because I use uh, Bitcoin.com uh, Bitcoin Cash uh, wallet generally, and it is it's available on iPhone for right yeah. now. Yeah, that's <laughs> why <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Mm, so, what about the mining uh, in Zencash uh, ecosystems? I, I, is it a good idea for miners? So, what do you recommend? <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, I always encourage miners to mine Zen, right? Of course. <laughs> But, uh, you know, the, uh, it, it's a dynamic system. And like any dynamic economic system, the conditions change near instantly, right? So, we always have more, more miners coming onto the network. But the, the return on investment is a function on the cost of running your mining operation. Um, and then the, the profit, and the profit is in Zen times the price of Zen. So if Zen increases in value, then yes, it's a great way to, to make money. Um, so it's just people need to be cautious. It's a different type of business decision. But my co-founder, Rolf, Rolf Versluis, is a really big miner. Um, so it, he, he's, uh, he's, uh, he, he does mining tutorials. He runs a big operation. And he mines Zen. It's been profitable so far. 
Uh, but I can't give investment advice on that. But what I can say is, um, you know, you can also make money by running a secure node on Zen. So we give 10% of our block reward to people that run a node, a secure node. And we also just announced uh, last week that we're we're starting a new node, a node system called Super Nodes, mm-hmm. where if you have 500 Zen and more, um, a, a better machine with, again, TLS, um, you, you could register as a super node and there's another 10% funding pool. So in total, we have 20% of the block reward is going to node operators. So you don't have to make money and you go and run a node. And then also when we have our voting system um, and here, you're able to make money by voting. So you can own Zen and vote on projects and make money by voting. So you can make money by mining, running a node or voting right now. Uh, and what generally uh, the technical requirements for the secure node or just ordinary node? What what it should be? Is just a personal? Is it just a PC or, or, or what? Uh, so generally, we say you should run this stuff on servers. Um, ah, n- okay. Number one, because they, they need to be up uh, for at a minimum ninety two percent of the yeah, time. Yeah. Right. So you need you need a dedicated server that's up all the time, not just your your uh, PC. Okay, so just uh, uh, ordinary nodes, it should be a home PC with a, a GPU. Yeah, is it GPU mining or CPU? To mine, yes. To mine, uh, it's GPU mining. But you're, you're, it's not going to be profitable if you just use your CPU to mine. Um, it, it's not, <laughs> yeah, I, know. I, I, I do it for fun sometimes. So I'll, I'll turn on the miner on my, on my, uh, my node. But um, really, you're not going to make money unless you actually have dedicated GPUs that are, are mining. No, okay. Uh, so I have heard that you, uh, the, uh, practically the first cryptocurrency project which have 24 by 7 uh, uh, customer service. Yes. How, how you do this? It's expensive, I know. It's very complicated. <laughs> so it what is. do they it do? Is. You know, so, but for me, it's worth the investment because um, number one, no one else is doing it. So we differentiate ourselves that way. But our brand, like we build our brand by focusing on our users and our customers and we treat them with respect, right? So a big part of that is if, you know, these people are dealing with money, right? Zen is money. And if they panic, if, they, if you lose your money, it could be very scary, <laughs> yeah. right? So yeah. we, want to ha- we want to have a real human being there to help you if something like this happens. Um, so that was some, it was a really big thing for us. So it's not profitable by any means, <laughs> right? It, it's a cost. It's a cost center for us to do it, but it's worth it because we're building our brand and we're showing the community that we care about them. And that's a really big part of the Zen ecosystem. Uh, so, you know, there are a lot of cases of fraud in cryptocurrency generally. Do you mean that your customer service could support the people uh, where somebody stolen the money uh, from a wallet or not? Uh, you know, that depends on the circumstance. If the money's gone, it's gone. It's really hard to, to yeah. solve that. Um, what we've done in the past is we'll do um, kind of a community fundraising where we'll help people recover. You know, we'll, we'll basically give donations to help them get money. Um, but, you know, that's not something that we can systematize. You can't because if you create a system where if someone loses their money, they can come to you and just tell you, hey, I lost my money. Uh, and then we give them money. Right. Then we could be we could be defrauded if yeah, we do yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but, uh, you know. Uh, uh, your system, the, the blockchain of Zencash does not allow to stop some transaction because uh, if you know this story about uh, Mr. Gallenhaus, uh, 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 the Ripple could generally stop any account, you know. I know this, uh, you, you can't, that's why. <laughs> uh, and. Uh, yeah. How does this your 24 hour service work? Is some kind of chat or, or is it possible to call by phone or something else? Oh, yeah. So we don't have phone support yet. Um, and, and I don't know if we will because we live in a, a distributed world. We're, we're, we're all over the world, right? Yeah. So I, I, yeah. It, it, yeah. <laughs> that, that would be much more costly. What we have right now is we, we use uh, Jira, which is a great. Uh, it, it, it's used by engineers to track projects, like engineering development projects, but um, we actually use it in addition to that to do customer support, where we have a, a, a robust ticketing system. So if you submit a ticket, we get back to you within 24-hour period, um, which you know th- there's 
plenty of other exchanges, for instance, where if you submit a ticket, they don't get back to you ever, right? So we, uh, we, we pride ourselves. And then what we do is we do analytics on our tickets. So we pay attention to what types of problems people have. And then we build a database on the types of problems. We analyze that database and we, we improve our products based on the problems that we see the customers having. And then we also develop a knowledge base with video tutorials, uh, blog tutorials on the most common problems. So it's a, a dynamic process with feedback from the community directly. Uh, and we have people, so we, we have people all over the world that cover different time zones so that when a ticket is submitted, it goes to the people who can respond almost immediately. Now, of course, we're small, and what happens when we become 100 times bigger, right? We have to hire many more people. But here's where I think it could be interesting, where I want to pioneer um, as customer support. You know, we have an independent agent who becomes an expert on Zen, and they get paid. You know, so say oh, someone has a okay, problem, okay. and they submit the problem. They can choose between different people who are independent operators. And so this is how people, so you could be in Russia, and this could be your job. You could be a Zen expert, and you get a rating. So every person that you help, they give you, say, like a five-star rating. And then people want to come to you, and they pay you directly to help them. And we can create this system. Maybe it'll be a hybrid system where the, the system itself pays these people, but then maybe there's also a fee from the user. Right? We'll, we'll come up with some, some solution here. But I think that's more interesting than a traditional customer support. It's like the future of customer support. Uh, I think you like Steve Jobs, you know, because you know that Apple is the number one company in the world of, on customer satisfaction. Yeah, <laughs> you follow, <Yeah. laughs> you follow him. You know, that's what I want. Yeah, of course, it's so important. Even if we lose money doing it, it's still worth it because it builds our brand. So the uh, Zencash is uh, an Apple in uh, cryptocurrency technologies and blockchain. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> it's a first. It's a first class <laughs> cryptocurrency. <Yeah. laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so, um, uh, just a moment. Uh, yeah. And uh, what some uh, interesting uh, things you are planning in your roadmap for this year? What? So some unique things which another blockchain, another uh, cryptocurrency system does not plan even. Could you so tell the secret? <laughs> yeah. No, definitely. There, there's uh, two big ones that yeah. I think we should talk about. One is this uh, research that we're doing in uh, voting. So we want oh, okay. to solve some of the governance issues where we're building a voting system into our, our software. Oh, um, okay. So so the users will actually be able to vote on what they want to, to happen, where the resources of the system go, which we call a uh, liquid democracy. So everyone has kind of uh, the ability to influence what happens. And we're building this into the software, and the system will actually pay people to vote. We use ZK Snarks for secret ballots. So yeah. we have um, a more game theoretic, rigorous um, voting mechanism, uh, where we actually use game theory to make sure that we improve the voting mechanism. So we're kind of uh, you know the system Dash that has uh, voting. It's yeah. very basic voting, very very basic. So um, we're massively improving that. Uh, we're applying game theory to it to have an actually rigorous economic system with voting. Uh, the second thing that we're doing is we're we're looking at a, a DAG, this directed acyclic graph um, protocol upgrade, which I think would be huge if we can actually do this successfully. Um, it would be a, a game changer in the industry because there's some big projects like IOTA, yeah. um, you know, and, and uh, Hashgraph and these other graph uh, protocols that I think um, they have interesting engineering solutions, but they're not scientifically rigorous. We're taking a scientifically rigorous um, block DAG protocol, which is uh, it's proof of work optimized, so we still have mining, whereas these others like IOTA, they, they do away with mining. There's no mining on the on their chains. Um, we would still package transactions into blocks, and the blocks would be mined with proof of work, the, the same way that they are right now, but with much lower difficulty, because we want, say, two or three dozen blocks solved per second. Um, so this would be a huge, huge protocol upgrade where we would be the, the most technologically advanced chain in the industry if we can do it properly. Uh, this was the first thing, and you show me this victory. <laughs> I suspect to have two. Yeah, yeah. No, no, voting. Voting plus DAG, they're yeah. two separate. Yeah. yeah, two separate ones. 
Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, what do you think that uh, in Ethereum uh, Vitalik Buterin wants to change the, to change this POW, yeah, and, uh, and uh, he wants to start uh, power of stake. Uh, and uh, I think that if uh, Zencash will become the number one in the world soon, uh, it you you <laughs> you you will think about this, yes, <laughs> because uh, you know. Yeah, that's a very interesting question. I think proof of work versus proof of stake has some very deep philosophical, but also security implications. Yeah. So right now we have no plans to go proof of stake. Um, proof of stake, you know, salt it saves a lot of energy, sure. Yeah. Um, but it's it's not, it's not proven to be as mathematically secure as proof of work. Uh, and security is our most important thing right now. That's our big value proposition: is high security for our 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 system. So we we are building out a, a really improved proof of work system, and we plan on keeping it that way into the foreseeable future. But what I can tell you is we have a research and development division, and investigating proof of work for the future is some, oh, I'm sorry, proof of stake for the future is something that we'll investigate because we have to investigate it to really understand if there's an opportunity there. But we have no firm plans right now to change from proof of work. Uh, and what do you think about this smart contracts uh, application development system? Uh, what do you what just do you think about this with your project? So uh, smart contracts, uh, I think, are wonderful and probably the future of where this technology is going. Uh, we start from a more secure system though, with very restricted um, scripting. Or a set of scripting functions that could actually be um, executed on the system, because the more um, the more capable or the more scripting options that you have or functions built into the protocol, the greater the threat surface is for people to hack into your system. Like we we keep seeing issues with Ethereum, for instance, where yeah. you know like the Parity wallet. There, there's always something else that comes up, or there's a new attack that happens because there's a Turing complete scripting language built into the protocol, yeah. which is wonderful. And I'm so happy to see it as an experiment, but it's risky. So we're starting starting very humble and we're building on top of that. And our solution to uh, building a platform is we're doing side chains. So we'll have our super nodes running side chains and on the side chains, there will be different D apps that are built on top of them, which is nice because it also compartmentalizes the system and there's an interface between the side chain and the main chain. And you can regulate what, what is allowed to happen across the interface. But so we could screw up a side chain, for instance, without screwing up the entire system. And I think that that's an important security consideration. But over time, we'll probably be adding Uh, more functionality, more more functions into the code, so people can do different types of contracting. Uh, okay, thank you. And uh, what about your project and your stuff? Are you hearing hearing some some stuff uh, in in the United States, or do you have uh, some headquarters in other country, uh, some offices? Mm. Yeah, so we we have um, a good amount of Americans working on the project, right? But we also have. Uh, so we have a team in the United Kingdom. We have a team in Germany. We have um, uh, just we have some representatives in France. We have a team in in Portugal. We have a team in uh, Italy. We have a team in Russia. We have a team in the Ukraine. Uh, we <laughs> okay. have uh, yeah. So so we're all over. We have some developers we're working with in Belarus. Um, yeah. So there's some other interesting um, you know opportunities in Kosovo we're considering. So there's. We're everywhere. Uh, we're in Africa, in Kenya. We have a team in, in Hong Kong. We're uh, South Korea, team in Tokyo, in um, Japan. So we're 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 growing quite a bit. And the goal here is to be a, a global project and not just a, an American project. So we don't want just Americans running it. We want to decentralize that. Yeah, I know. You you want to uh, you want to own all the world. I know. Uh, but I have heard, I have heard that uh, you uh, just have some cooperation with Ledger uh, company, yeah, and due to uh, when it it was be possible to use Ledger uh, with Zencash wallet. Uh, soon, very soon. So the code is done, and uh, we pushed the code to the Ledger team, and they accepted it. So it's just a matter of the the next uh, firmware release that they do on their side. So it, it, it's all done though. And if you're a technically savvy user, you can take a ledger now and you can put our code on it and it'll work. Um, but if you want to just buy a ledger with Zen, 
then you have to wait for the company to release the next uh, the next version. Uh, do you plan to uh, make some cooperation with uh, Satoshi Labs with Trezor? Because I personally use Trezor, I love this uh, uh, better than uh, so life. do I. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yes, absolutely. We, we already have a team. Our Ukrainian team is working on um, Trezor integration. So we have we have five five hardware wallets that we're integrating into right now. Um, and the ledger will be the first. Zeta, you mentioned. There's Trezor. There's Open Dime, which is another innovative, um, you know, new wallet. Uh, right now, it's Bitcoin only, but we're building a Zen application for it, and um, um, KeepKey as well. Yeah. So, uh, which uh, wallet would you suggest for just beginners? Uh, because now the people, you know, coming into cryptocurrencies, they they don't don't uh, uh, they cannot open the wallet. Uh, which is the simplest way and secure it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, what I recommend on, on our side is uh, check out the, the Arisen wallet. Um, it's on our website. Yeah. It's our light client because it has a password protection. So it's nice for new users. It's simple, has a clean interface. Uh, but we're also working on um, two other wallets um, that are designed for new users. We have one wallet in particular um, that is designed for someone who has never touched cryptocurrency in their life. And it's so simple. We have that's about 50% uh, done right now, and we have another wallet um, that will be released in a month, which is also uh, I think a really nice um, version for new users. But right now, I would recommend people check out the Arisen wallet. It doesn't have the shielded transaction capability, so that's the trade-off. Yeah. If you want the shielded transactions, you have to use the full node wallet, which is more technical. It's a little bit harder for new users. Uh, because you have to be a little bit more, um, you know, um, savvy. Yeah, yeah, a little yeah. bit more technical. On technical you side, to, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have to protect your private keys. You have to hide, you know, protect your wallet file. Um, but the Arisen wallet has nice password protection. So I like that for new users. Uh, and for those, uh, for my Russian subscribers, which uh, think to buy, to include the Zencash uh, into portfolio, what we would suggest some inside information when when Zen cash will pump in general. <laughs> <laughs> so so that I can't say. <laughs> when, when, you know, I try to be responsible and ethical and tell people <laughs> diversify diversify your money, right? Don't just only buy Zen. Uh, we're, we are in a very interesting project and I think we're doing really good things, but it's still risky, right? It, we're still a, a new we're a small a small cap. We're we're new. We're kind of risky, but we're we're interesting. But diversify. You know, don't just buy them. So uh, if I have portfolio with uh, uh, just ten alt altcoins, Bitcoin, ten altcoins. So Zen uh, Zencash, you think uh, it should be about 10, 20, 30, 50 percent? How do you suggest? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I can't really answer that. I, I would say Zen, Zen should definitely be in the portfolio, but it's yeah. your choice on how much of, of it should be. Uh, okay, and the last maybe question, so I know that it's, uh, it's a the time. Uh, are you planning to develop some uh, merchandise, uh, so merchant uh, to make payment in Zen Cash for uh, real goods, offline goods? Yes, definitely. So actually, this is um, kind of a multi-level question because number one, yes, right now we also ha we have merchant plugins, so merchants can accept Zen, um, and they can do that. Through, we have some partnerships with, um, say, like Coin to Payments um, and CoinPayments.net. Uh, we also have a, a WooCommerce plugin for people that run websites could accept Zen. But where, where I really see the opportunity in the future for merchants is, like, a merchant doesn't want to accept the exchange rate risk of cryptocurrency. Yeah. If a merchant pays their bills in rubles, they don't want Zen because then they get Zen, Zen goes down 20%, but they still pay their ruble bills right to their suppliers. So I think the real opportunity is when we have a price stable asset, which we're working on, is we want to have, uh, say, a Zen dollar, uh, a USDZ. Maybe we can have a Zen ruble one day where it's denominated in Zen, but it's a smart contract that always equals one ruble or one dollar. And I think when we have that, then merchants will start accepting it as much more. 
Uh, and do uh, can you tell me some uh, uh, shops where uh, I, I I can buy something for Zen? Or just could I buy an iPhone? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So yeah. actually, we we have we have oh, uh, we have a merchant directory that um, actually I'm not sure if it's live yet, but we've been working on a merchant directory. So you'll have a nice one area you can go and see everything. But my favorite thing to buy with Zen is uh, my VPN service, uh, TorGuard. Oh. Oh. TorGuard is a great VPN, and uh, they take Zen, so I love that. And we we're gonna have some very interesting um, new new ways to spend your Zen in in the very near future, but I can't give you guys details yet. Uh, and uh, just for for Russian customer, for uh, for for your Russian customer, what uh, kind of exchange do you suggest for to buying Zen? Because now it's it's practically impossible to uh, open a new account in American uh, some exchanges. So which uh, yeah, which exchange is best for buying Zen? So that's a really good question. I and I'm not sure for the Russian market actually. Um, that's a that's something I'll have to ask uh, some of our our Russian team. Um, but what would be really nice, actually, is we need help getting onto Russian markets. So um, there is uh, well, Yobit, right? Is is yeah. one exchange that yeah. I think is accessible. Um, you know, they they said that they were going to integrate us um, like nine months ago, and wow. they never did. So so what we need is we need. It would be really nice for the Russian users and community to be vocal and go to your exchange and tell them. Talk to Zen. Like we'll talk to them. We'll integrate. We'll help them integrate Zen, right? Um, so we need help with that, and the community could be really helpful if they can be, put pressure on their exchanges. Uh, and uh, there is some kind. Uh, uh, there are some uh, exchanges in Russia. And uh, are you planning to come to Binance? Mm, that's that's something I can't really talk about. Um, but yeah, the the big exchanges are all on our. Our radar. So we have a very active business development team that's been talking to all of them, and uh, we can't really talk about them until until we're actually listed. We can't talk about it beforehand, uh, but we're talking to you know a, a wide variety of exchanges right now, um, very big ones. Okay, Rob, thank you very much for today for for your answers. It's very very interesting. I think it should be interesting for my subscribers. Yes, and yeah. uh, <laughs> good luck. I wish your project will uh, became uh, the cryptocurrency number one in the world, the securest and the customer ori oriented, uh, and uh, that you will you will do health business. I know, and I wish you luck. Bye. Thank you so thank much. You Thanks much. for having me. Thank you. Alrighty, take care. Take care. Bye. Bye.